Uh, hello, my friends, Bob Lee here. Uh, today, I'm going to show you something that I learned 46 years ago. Now, it concerns the old Craftsman molding head uh, blades and how I was taught how to use them in a table saw. Now, my shop teacher taught me how to set the saw up for these. Shows you how to do a zero clearance on these molding heads. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show you was how I put a, kind of put an edge back on these. Now, I usually get something, a flat surface like the table saw, and I just run these. This is a piece of 400 sandpaper. And what you want to do is just catch that edge and run it around a little bit and just kind of polish that edge because you don't want to change the profile edge. Now the next thing you gotta realize about these heads is there's a certain rotation marked on the uh, wheel here and you want to be able to put these in the correct way and what it is is this channel goes away from the Allen wrench screw. So you just kind of slide those babies in there like that and you run the screw in and then you torque down the screw and then you go to the next situation after you've sharpened them. You end up doing all three the same way and then it's ready to go. Okay, what I'm going to do next is to install my molding heads. Now, with each set of molding heads, you have to decide on which way the cut is going to be. Sometimes you have to run it on the other side of the fence. Sometimes you have to run it on this side of the fence. So with the particular cutters that I have picked out, I kind of held the board up and kind of looked at where the profile was going to be on the board. What I'm going to do next is going to mount the molding head. Here's where the idea comes in for a zero clearance insert. Now I suppose I could spend a while making one of these. But my shop teacher didn't have one either. He only had the regular insert that came with his table saw. But he figured out that he didn't want his stock going down in there when he was running this. His idea was to take a quarter inch piece of plywood and a sacrificial fence. Now, the first thing he did was he would bring the fence over with the sacrificial piece of wood on there. With this particular cutter, you want to if you want the whole profile, you just want it right up against the fence. Okay, I locked down my fence. Okay, I got my lock, my fence down. Now this is what his trick was. He would put this down onto the table, set his sacrificial fence back on top, and then he would put on some clamps to the fence. Like that. We're going to be able to clear that. Now you see this piece is still moving. Well, first things first, we had to get this clamp down. Next thing we want to do is fix this so that this doesn't move. Now he didn't have an outfeed table, but I do. So I'm able to use my 
my outfeed table as a hefty clamp. Because I can put in I can put in the strap to hold this sacrificial top. The next thing for me to do is to slowly bring my cutters up through this plywood because I only want to bring enough up so that I can run a uh, first pass with a sacrificial board to make sure I've got this set up right. Okay, I've got a board here that I can run as my sacrificial. good start with it. The profile's coming out the way I'd like it to. Now, if I want it a little deeper, I just keep bringing the head up a little bit. But I want to start back over and start running my other pieces through because I want to put this profile onto my pieces that I'm going to run next. The idea is not to take too much out of the board at once. see it but the profile is where I want it on that board now and I'm going to run a couple of extra pieces just so that I have enough the one thing I wanted to tell you about these molding heads is they have all kinds of different profiles on them. Now, I have learned that if you need this part or this part, you just have to adjust your wood and either put it into the fence or bring it out of the fence or whatever it takes to get the profile of what you want. Because you may only want this part of it. Or uh, when I ran these, I only wanted the thing to be uh, literally that deep and that wide. So what I did was I actually cut it out of the board so my board was just as wide as this cutter and just as deep or a little bit deeper than those little notches there. So I actually made a profile of a piece of molding that was very thin and very small, but I ran it on a board the size that you saw me running there because that's actually going to get cut down a little bit for a narrower baseboard. To my Thank you, my friends, for watching today. Uh, I hope my video was informative and helps those young woodworkers out there with these molding heads to understand a little better how I use them. And uh, maybe that will help them. So if you like what you see, please subscribe. 
share, leave me a thumbs up, make a comment. All of it is greatly appreciated. Thank you again for watching.